We have to leave right away. I was wearing an apron like this one, and I just kept it on. I didn't even take a change of underwear with me. I thought it was a roll call or something, so I just went with a winter coat, leading my kids by the hand. But some of the other people had overnight bags and lots of other stuff. I wondered why. But when we got to the community center, we were told to get away from the power plant for about three days. One of the evacuees was Munehiro Ishida, who had left the plant right after the earthquake. He began preparations to evacuate with his wife and three children. To be honest, I thought it was just a precaution. I didn't think there was going to be an explosion or that we were in danger. I thought we were evacuating just in case. They were talking on the TV about how they were going to vent the reactor, and I knew that some radiation would be released, but I thought they were just venting to relieve the pressure, that's all. So I figured they wanted us to evacuate temporarily because there was going to be some radiation released. That's how I interpreted it. We thought we'd be able to return home after two or three days. We figured it was just a precaution and that we'd be home again in a few days at most. We sort of expected that we'd get some kind of food rations during the evacuation too. It didn't seem that serious to us. Because most people were not given any information, they had no sense of crisis about the power plant. With no clear idea of the actual circumstances, 11,000 people left their town behind. At 2.30 that afternoon, news reached the seismic isolation building that Unit 1 had been successfully vented. Everyone thought that the worst was over. It was then that Takashi, who was on standby, was overwhelmed by a huge booming sound. There was a hydrogen explosion at Unit 1. The ground shook violently, rocking the seismic isolation building. There was this big boom. It was like the ground was trembling, and there was a really horrible noise. Of course, that made us worried. So we went to the main room to see what was going on. And when we got there, we heard people in the command center in a heated discussion. It was like they were panicking, talking about the explosion. They were asking, is anyone hurt? All kinds of information was coming in. People were talking frantically about how many millisieverts of radiation were being found at different locations. That kind of data was coming in as part of the conversations between the people in the command center and the people making measurements outside. So naturally we heard those things. The roof of the reactor building was blown off, sending debris flying everywhere. The force of the explosion destroyed the buildings around the seismic isolation building and injured people. Radiation levels at the plant shot up as high as 230.8 microsieverts per hour. People exposed at that level received the maximum annual dose of radiation for civilians in just over four hours. We had worked at the plant feeling secure in the belief that it was safe. When it exploded, we realized how serious the situation was. Of course, we realized it was serious from the time the reactor was vented, but with the explosion, it became much more urgent. Of course, things were bad in the surrounding area, too, but Unit 1 was just down the hill from where we were in the command center. 
The unit that had just exploded was right there, close by. Naturally, we feared for our own safety. We wanted to get out of there as soon as possible. At one point, I didn't talk directly to the boss about it, but I asked one of the supervisors if we could leave. He told me that they wanted us to stay. They wanted our help if something happened. Meanwhile, local residents fled through the hills to the city of Tamura, about 40 kilometers west of the plant. They didn't understand just how serious the situation was until they saw television reports at the evacuation center. I thought, wow, this is really awful. I couldn't believe it at first, but when I saw what had happened to Unit 1... After the explosion, all eyes were glued to the TV. We'd been free to come and go, but they began saying we shouldn't go outside. That's when we realized it was dangerous. They told us to stay indoors. They call it indoor evacuation. Once the hydrogen explosion happened, we realized we were in danger. At first, people had gone out walking their dogs, and some people had been sleeping in their cars. One of the evacuation centers in Tamura was Ishimori Elementary School. A sense of crisis had grown there as well. Some people at the center took measures to protect themselves from radiation poisoning. There were officials from the town of Tomioka there at the school. No officials from Okuma were there. There were two Tomioka officials and they came with some bags and started handing out iodine tablets. They gave us a little instruction pamphlet and told us to read it and to take the pills if it became necessary. I worked at the power plant and no one had ever told me to take iodine pills when I was around high radiation levels. Normally, iodine just isn't in the picture. So when they distributed those pills, I knew that things had gotten very dangerous. Stable iodine can have side effects and normally requires a doctor's supervision. In the confusion, however, the decision whether to take it or not was left up to the residents themselves. They told us it was up to us parents to decide whether or not to give our kids the pills. They said that there were side effects and that if we decided to give them the pills without a doctor's guidance, we'd bear responsibility ourselves. The hard thing was deciding on our own when the pills should be taken. If a doctor gives you direction, you can give the proper doses at the proper times. But we didn't have that kind of medical knowledge. It was very difficult. When should we take them? We kept discussing it. We decided to hold on to them and not use them. We figured we were inside the gym and hoped that would keep us safe. Should they give their children iodine pills? Lacking reliable information about radiation levels, the Ishidas decided against it. Early in the morning of March 14th, pressure inside the Unit 3 reactor building also reached the limit. Despite the recovery efforts of plant personnel, the worst-case scenario was unfolding. They told us to get ready. We might be next. 
We might have to go in. I was scared. I couldn't help but wonder how much radiation I'd be exposed to. I guess that's what frightened me. I wondered how long it would take to do the job. By this time, Units 1 and 3 were being cooled intermittently with seawater. Takashi was ordered to prepare for recovery work. That's when it happened. The second explosion was much louder than the one at Unit 1. Panels fell in the walkway connecting to the administration building. I mean the ceiling panels. They've, they fell down. So I got out of the way. I didn't run away, but I got off to one side. I could see that all the glass was blown out of the administration building. There was a general sense of panic among the people working in the command center. A fire truck couldn't come in close because of all the debris. We just couldn't get anything done easily. With the explosion at Unit 3, following the earlier explosion at Unit 1, the command center fell into chaos. Takashi had no choice but to remain on standby. We were there for the recovery work. I think we all wanted to stabilize the plant. I'm pretty sure everyone felt that way. But at the same time, we wanted to get out of there as fast as we could. We wanted to go home and see the faces of our families and be reassured. That feeling was very strong. I didn't know if I would ever see my family again. I didn't know when I'd be able to see them, when I'd be able to leave the plant. I wished I had left on the 12th and then on the 13th. I regretted not leaving, even though they told me to stay. News of the second explosion reached the gymnasium in Tamura where the largest group of evacuees was staying. Takashi's family was among those who heard the news there. They had had no contact with Takashi for three days. My main concern is that my husband is apparently still inside the power plant. That's what really worries me. The explosion at Unit 3 was a decisive event for many of the residents. There was panic in the air as people wondered if they'd ever be able to go home. Things had really gone wrong. A lot of people were saying Okuma was done for. We were feeling angry more than worried. The situation was hopeless. We didn't think we could ever go home. I had no idea what would happen to me and I cried, although I didn't let myself cry in the gym. At the plant, after the repeated explosions, it was decided to pull out as many people as possible that evening, leaving only essential personnel. The plant manager, Mr. Yoshida himself, came out of the command center and into the corridor. He told us it was okay for us to leave and thanked us for our cooperation. We didn't actually do anything, but that's what he said, so we had permission to go. 